Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib, and we're taking a look today at the IOSAFE 220 Plus NAS. This integrates a two-drive Synology 220 Plus NAS into what is effectively a fireproof data safe. This can survive a fire of up to 1550 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. It can also sit under water, fresh or salt water, at a 10-foot depth for 72 hours. So it's designed to survive a fire along with the fire department coming to put the fire out. And we're not going to burn it today. I'm trying to arrange for that still. But we will take a close look at this product and how it's constructed and see how it performs in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge from IOSAFE. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this video, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this NAS is all about. Now, the price point on this is about $940 without drives installed. There's definitely a price premium here for all of this protection versus what a Synology 220 Plus NAS would typically cost, which is about 300 bucks. And then if you have it pre-configured with additional drives and memory, that will drive the price up further. One reason to consider having them install drives for you is that you'll also get two years of data protection. So if you do have a fire or something else happens, you can send the drives off for data recovery services. And you can also pay a little bit more to have that coverage extended uh, for up to five years. You also have to get the RAM upgraded when you buy it versus doing it yourself. This one comes with two gigabytes of RAM by default and you can opt to have six gigabytes installed on it. Now this otherwise has the same configuration as the Synology 220 Plus NAS. It's got a Celeron J4025 processor from Intel. That is a Gemini Lake refresh chip. And what that means is that it's very good not only for general data serving and some of the features that I'll show you in a few minutes, but it's also good as a media server because it supports Intel QuickSync technology. So if you're looking to run Plex, which is a sponsor here on the channel in full disclosure, this would work very well as a Plex server. And of course, if your house burned down, you wouldn't lose any of your media. And that's why you pay a little bit extra for it. It's got your USB 2.0 port here on the front that you can use for very quick data transfer. So if you had a card from your camera or something, you can plug it in and push the copy button down here and get all that data ingested. You have lights here that indicate network and drive activity. On the back here, you've got a cooling fan, and the fan noise on this is surprisingly quiet. The prior two IOSAFE NAS boxes I've looked at had very loud fans that were so loud, you really couldn't put the device in the middle of a workspace. This one, I think, can work well in the middle of a workspace because you can barely hear the fan even if you place it under load. And I did let this thing run overnight just to see uh, if a long duration use case might make the fan run louder, but it really didn't. So I think if you uh, are looking for something rugged and quiet, this one I think finally gets there because that was the big knock I had against these in the past. You have two gigabit ethernet ports here on the back, but unfortunately these are one gigabit only, not the faster ethernet we're starting to see make its way into devices like this one. Synology though does support link aggregation if your switch supports that, which does give you the option for a little more bandwidth out the back here. You've got a USB 3 port over here. This is where I would suggest plugging in an external hard drive for doing backups. IOSAFE actually makes fireproof external hard drives, which you could decide to plug in or pretty much any USB 3 drive will do. And I do strongly recommend that you continue making backups even though you have a fireproof NAS device because you're likely going to have a drive failure at some point and that's probably more likely than a fire or a flood might be. So definitely make sure you get your backups done there. And then your power adapter plugs in here. Power consumption on this at idle is about 12 and a half watts and then under load it'll be probably in the 20 or 30 watt territory. It doesn't consume any more power than your standard Synology 220 plus NAS would otherwise consume. So it isn't all that power hungry. Now all this protection does have a weight penalty. It's about 30 pounds or 13.6 kilograms. And that's thanks to the very heavy metal casing here, along with the internal components that are designed for 
fireproofing. Now this usually is screwed in. I unscrewed the screws in an earlier take just to get into it quicker. And they give you an Allen wrench here to get it open. And the front part of the case is also held on by very strong magnets, but you definitely want to make sure that everything is screwed down tightly for the best protection. Now the way the fireproofing works is through this white material here. This feels like porcelain, but it's actually an endothermic material. So if this catches fire, there is water kind of baked into this material that will bleed off as steam, which takes the temperature away from the drives here in the middle. Now there's a limit to how much stuff you've got here, and that's why they rate it for 30 minutes, but that usually is enough to have the fire burn itself out or at least get the fire department there. Now the drives are further protected inside of this metal casing here, and it's hard to see on camera, but there is a heat sink all around it that that fan in the back uh, is able to deal with as far as temperature is concerned. And all you have to do here is just unscrew this center screw, and then you can get at the drives. Now this one came with two drives pre-installed from the factory, and at the moment they are packing in uh, the Seagate Iron Wolf drives. So we'll take another screw out here and pop this drive out so you can see what it's like to get inside of it. And that is pretty much it. So you can pretty much use this like a normal Synology drive after you peel away all the protective hardware here and uh, then you can swap drives back and forth. It'll take a little bit longer than it would on a stock Synology device, but you need uh, to spend a little time to keep everything protected. Now the waterproofing comes from this component here. This seals up really tight. There's a big thick gasket here around the side that not only keeps this uh, waterproof, but also airtight. And depending on the elevation that you live at, you might hear a little bit of a hiss when you open it up as the air pressure equalizes between the drive capsule here and the outside environment. Now this is designed though to only protect the drives. So if you do have a fire, the electronics are gone but the drives should be okay. And you could pop these out and pop them into another 220 plus IOSafe box or just a regular Synology NAS and you should be able to get at that data. But you can also mail it back to them for their data recovery service if you want to be careful about getting that data back. The choice is yours and hopefully uh, all will be intact after the incident and hopefully we'll have an opportunity soon to have a fire department burn one of these things inside of a training environment so we can get a good feel for how a real fire in an office or home uh, might impact the device here. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. I've got it plugged into my network right now. It's on gigabit ethernet and I've already configured it. It shows up on my network here as IOSafe 220 plus. That's the name that I gave it. And I'm in the default file share that I created. And on my Mac here, I've got a video file that I made of me waving at the camera here. It's about 157 megabytes. I'm just gonna copy that over to the NAS here. And now it is on the NAS and I can play that file back over the network. It all looks like it's working pretty well here. And of course, other users who I grant access to can get to that file as well. I also set up the Blackmagic disk speed test here. And what we're gonna do is write out a one gigabyte file to the NAS and then read it back. And as you can see here, we are writing at almost 104 megabytes per second. That's about the maximum that gigabit ethernet can do. And we're reading at about that same rate as well. So it's making full use of the network performance that it has. And I would venture to say that if this could support faster than gigabit ethernet, you would probably see a little more performance than what we're currently getting here. Let's log into its control panel now and take a look at a few other things. Now, one of the things I love about Synology devices is their interface. And this is running DSM 7.1 at the time I'm recording this video. And you can get access to the whole file system here based on what user levels and privileges you have granted. You can even play back videos in the browser like the one we uploaded earlier. What I'm gonna do though is jump into the disk configuration just so you can see what the default setup is here. So you can see that we've got two drives set up as a single storage pool. And basically what's happening here is that one drive is mirroring to the other. So although we have two four terabyte drives installed, 
we only have access to four terabytes of storage because one is mirroring to the other. And that is the recommended way to operate one of these things. Although you could put them into RAID 0 configuration or have them run as just a bunch of disks or JBOD where you can access each drive individually. But I think having redundancy is important, which is why I would recommend leaving it at the default. In the control panel, you can set up all of your users and all their different settings. So for example, if we jump into the user here and create one, I can decide what they have access to. I can also, when I set up the file shares, determine what different users can access on their own. One of the things that I think is really neat about Synology is that you can build out your own version of the Google Docs environment or the Microsoft 365 environment. So they have something called Synology Drive and in that Synology Drive system, they have a spreadsheet, a word processor, a presentation app similar to PowerPoint. You can have people operating on these spreadsheets simultaneously and get a very similar experience to what you might get with Google or Microsoft, but it's all part of the cost of purchase. So you don't have to spend a monthly fee to host it somewhere. It is all residing on your device. And as long as you figure out a way for people to get to that device, you can set up a couple hundred users and have them all access this at the same time. Now you can install additional applications on the NAS through their package center. This consists of Synology's own software along with a lot of open source applications too. There's things like backup for the Synology NAS itself, but also for computers on your network. There's all sorts of different server applications you can install on it. It also supports Docker, which is a way to containerize these applications into something that is isolated from the rest of the system. So if you have any experience with Docker, they've got a really nice interface for it on here. I use this quite a bit on my personal NAS device. And if you opt for the six gigabytes of RAM, you can even boot up other operating systems on this through their virtual machine manager. I've been able to get Windows to boot up on other Synology NASes powered by Intel processors like this one. So there's really just no limit to the things that you can have this thing do on your network. And every day I'm always finding something new that I can have my Synology device do for me. And we'll have a lot more on this stuff in the future. And we've done a lot on this already that you can find on my YouTube channel. So who is this NAS for? Well, there are corporate and government policies in certain applications that require data storage devices meet certain criteria for fires or flood. You could also have a scenario where you have critical data stored in a place where you don't have adequate access to broadband and therefore getting the data off-site might be challenging. So this adds a layer of security or at least peace of mind that the data might survive a catastrophic event occurring. And I think those who are shopping for this device know that they need one. But for many folks, the regular 220 plus NAS from Synology is probably going to be just fine, provided you're getting your data off of it and stored safely off-site somewhere on a regular basis. But it is very big and heavy. It's gonna be harder to walk off with this thing. There is a Kensington lock on the back, so you can lock it down to a desk. But beyond that, they even have a floor-mounted thing that you can stick it into that makes theft even more difficult. So there are certainly use cases for this, and there is a higher cost of entry for all of this protection. That's gonna do it for this look at the IOSafe 220 Plus NAS. And until next time, this is Lon Zybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.